Hello, good day everyone. We are the group 4. We're going to show you about the art of emerging Europe. But before we start, let me introduce you myself. I am Francesca Marie M. De La Cruz and I'm gonna share to you the first topic. So we have Ancient Greece, Greek's value poetry, drama, philosophy, which remain interesting fields to study for contemporary times. Painting, sculpture, and architecture, those who want to be involved in art, one is required to have a certain skill sets and body of knowledge. The humanist ideals of the Greeks were reflected in their democratic form of government that at this certain level of freedom was also reflected in their artworks, architecture, literature, and philosophy. The principal belief systems and ideologies are the core of Greek art and architecture. So, this picture are the examples of Greek art. The Greeks were known to place prime importance in the use of reason. For this civilization, man is at the center of society, and how they train their minds could be the very foundation of how they live their lives. The Greek art have four periods. So these are geometric period, archaic period, classical period, and Hellenistic period. The first one is geometric period, the period when ge geometric shapes and patterns have taken the spotlight in most of the artwork. Geometric period was 900 before Common Era, was a time when Greece was starting to get back from the onslaught of what seemed to be the Dark Ages. And the second one is archaic period. Place important on human figures, it is the primarily result of Greece trading activities with other civilizations. Archaic period was 7th century BC. Place importance on human figures. And the third one is classical period. Greek sculpture and architecture is at peak, rebuilding their temples and focusing on creating artworks. Classical period was 383 to 323 BC, the golden age of Greek art. And the last one is Hellenistic period, emphasized balance while showcasing dynamic poses and a number of emotions evoked by the subject. Hellenistic period was 330 to 31 BC. This is the time of Alexander the Great. So let's move forward to ancient Rome. This picture is the amphitheater, one of the architectural achievements of Romans. This amphitheater was planned and constructed during the reign of Emperor Vespasian. May I call Ms. Gutierrez to present the next topic? Middle Ages. It is the period between the decline of the Roman Empire and the Renaissance, characterized by ignorance and darkness. The Middle Ages deserve to be called the Dark Ages because it was the period in time that caused sorrow and death. It was the time that caused many people to wonder if there is a better life out there or even in the future for the next generation. Another dominant characteristic for this period was a church. It is the central figure and highlighting the religious. Cathedral were built and it's categorized in two period. Roman acts, inspired by the old Roman Empire. Between the 10th and 12th century, most European cathedral were built in the Roman act style. Roman act cathedral are solid and substantial. They have rounded mansory, arches, and burial vaults, supporting the roof, thick stone walls, and few windows. Gothic more on northern flavor from the Goths. Around 1200, church builder began to embrace a new architectural style known as the Gothic. Gothic structure have the huge stained glass windows, pointed vaults and arches, and spire and flying buttresses. In contrast to heavy previous style, Gothic architecture seemed to be almost weightless. Renaissance art. European art produced during the 14th and 15th centuries in Europe. 
the Renaissance explored new styles and concepts while advancing creative skills. It is regarded as a high of artistic achievement that wasn't surpassed until the modern period. The word Renaissance originate with the Italian word Renascita, which means rebirth. A period in European civilization characterized by the revival of classical knowledge and wisdom. In this sense, the Renaissance may be seen as a spectacular rebirth in which art and culture that were unmistakably superior to antiquity were created. This was fueled by a thriving economy at the time as well as culture that valued learning and discovery. Renaissance art is known for its elaborate allegories, which are type of complex analogy that allows a work to have hidden meanings. Renaissance art is known for its use of pathos. It aims to capture the feeling in the viewer. Subjects in Renaissance painting typically have more natural expression on their face, even with no intense emotion is portrayed. For example, the famous and elusive smile of Mona Lisa, which seems to vanish from some viewing perspective. As for the next topic, may I call Ms. Kachalian to present. Hi, my name is Colleen D. Gachalian, and I will talk about Baroque and the Rocco, Mannerism and Neoclassicism. First is Baroque and the Rocco. Baroque and the Rocco are two art and architectural styles that were popular in 15, 16, 17, and 18th centuries. Both of these exquisite forms of art are associated with the same art movement because scientific and philosophical advances increased during neoclassical period. Most portraits in the Baroque and Rocco styles focus on elaborating political truths, various aspects of society and culture at the time. Second is Mannerism. Mannerism is an art style that flourished during the late Renaissance period, roughly from 1520 to 1600s. Figures in Mannerism paintings and sculpture are frequently elongated and distorted. The Mannerism style originated in Italy where artists were influenced by the figures painted on ceiling and the Last Judgment in the Sistine Chapel by Michelangelo. And the last one is Neoclassicism. Neoclassicism was Western cultural movement what, that drew inspiration from classical antiquities art and culture in decorative and visual arts. May I call the Julian to tackle the next topic. I am Lynn Marie de Julian and I am presenting to you the Romanticism. Romanticism, attitude or intellectual orientation that characterizes many works of literature, painting, music, architecture, criticism, and historiography in Western civilization over a period of the late 18th to mid year 19th century. It can be it can be seen as rejection of a precept of order, calm, harmony, balance, idealization, and rationality that typified classicism in general late 18th century. The characteristic of attitude romanticism it depends appreciation of the beauties of nature, a general exaltation of emotion over reason and the sense over intellectual, a preoccupation with the genius. The hero and the exceptional figure in general and a focus on his or her passion and dinner struggle, a new view of the artist as a supremely individual creator, those whose creative spirit is, is more important than a strict adherence to formal rules and traditional procedure, and emphasize upon imagination as a gateway to transcendent experience and spiritual truth. 
an obsessive interest in folk culture, national and ethnic cultural origin in the medieval era. Romanticism is an attitude or intellectual orientation that characterizes many works of Eastern literature. It was also a reaction to the Enlightenment as well as 18th century nationalism and physical materialism in general. The individual, the subjective, the irrational, imaginative, the personal, the spontaneous, the emotional, the visionary, and the transcendental were all emphasized in Romanticism. Romanticism was characterized by the following attitudes. Depend operation of nature's beauty and general acceleration of emotion over the reason. Realism, the art, the accurate detail, and embellish depiction of nature or a contemporary life. And the art realism is the accurate detail and unemployment depiction of nature of contemporary life. Realism of process, imaginative idealization in favor of a close examination of outward appearance. As a result, realism in its broadest sense has encompassed numerous artistic currents in various civilizations. In the visual arts, for example, an ancient Hellenistic Greek culture depicting boxers and depriving Decrepit old women exhibit realism. Realist approach can be found in the work at, of 17th century painters such as Caravaggio, Dutch genre painters. Impressionism Impressionism developed in France in the 19th century and is based on the practice of painting out of doors and spontaneously on the spot rather than in the studio from sketches. Main impressionist subjects were landscape and scenes of everyday life. Impressionism was developed by Claude Monet and the Paris-based artist from the early 1860s. Though the process of painting on the spot can be said to have been pioneered and retained by John Constable in around 1813 to 17 through this desire to paint nature in a realistic way. Good day everyone, I'm Wendy Berry and I'm here to share with you the topic of post-impressionism. Post-impressionism is predenomant predominantly French art movement that developed roughly between 1856 and 1905. It was paid attention to the fleeting effect of light atmosphere movement. Post-impressionists both extended impressionism while rejecting its limitation, the artist continued using vivid colors, a take application of paint, and real-life subject matter but were more inclined to emphasize the geometric forms, distort forms for an expressive effect and just unnatural and seemingly random colors. And they believed that color could be independent from form and composition as an emotional static bear of meaning. This is the example of art post-impressionism. Neo-Impressionism, it is an artistic movement coming from Impressionism. It is a faith in science and color science, the use of bright colors. They were able to create a movement very quickly in 19th century. Neo-Impressionism has two terms, Divisionism and Pointillism. First is Divisionism. It refers to the method of applying individual strokes of complementary and contrasting colors. Second is pointillism. Describes a later technique based on divisionism in which dots of color instead of blocks of colors are applied. The next quote. And this is the example. Uh, uh, this is the, the art of neo 
Neo Impressionism. The last is Art Nouveau. A compelling and energetic style in the visual art which spanned from around the early 1890s to the First World War. Art Nouveau artists inspired by plant forms and nature took organic sub subjects and platen and abstracted them into sophisticated sinus and flowing motifs. Art Nouveau has, has seven characteristics. First is a Symmetrical shapes, extensive use of arch arches and curved forms, curved glass, curved plant-like embellish embellishments, mosaic, stained glass, and last Japanese motifs. May I call Mary Flor, a uh, Miss Mary Florence, to continue the topic. Next topic. My name is Mary Florgo. I'm going to tackle the topic of Phobism, Cubism, and Futurism. The number one is Phobism. Phobism is the name applied to the work produced by a group of artists, which include Henry Matisse and Andre the Rain, from around 1905 to 1910, which is characterized by strong colors and fierce brushworks. Phobism art got its name and were less phobies in French for the wild beasts. Their name goes back to a comment made by Arctic critic Louis Vosselis, 1870-1943, after visiting the Parisian Salon the Autumn in 1905. Second, Cubism. Cubism wanted to show the whole structure of objects in their paintings, without using techniques such as perspective or graded shading to make them look realistic. They have four important characteristics of Cubism. The application of multiple perspective, the use of geometric shapes, a monochromatic color palette, and a flattened picture plane. And last, Futurism. Futurism was launched by the Italian poet Filippo Tommaso Marinite in 1909. On 20 February, he published his Manifesto of Futurism on the front page of the Paris newspaper Le Figaro. Futurism was a short life art artistic movement founded in 1909 by the Italian writer Filippo Tommaso, 1876-1944. The goal of the futurist was to discard the art of past and the use, user in a new age that rejected tradition and celebrated change, originality, and innovation in culture and society. And this is our report about Art of Emerging Europe in behalf of Group 4, we would like to express our gratitude to our professor for supporting us in our subject.